Hi, welcome to today, today's STATA module for the Research Support Center at the College of Family, Home, and Social Sciences at Brigham Young University. Now today we're going to be going over how to identify, tag, and drop duplicates in a data set. It's often the case that when we work with new and unfamiliar data sets, or if we have created a data set by hand, imputing the values for various variables into an Excel file or a text document, that, we've, that sometimes we can enter things incorrectly and often duplicate observations. Now, duplicates can be observations that are exactly identical across all variables, or those which are identical, identical across all variables except a few. Now let's go ahead and get started um, in today's module by opening a new do file. You do that by simply clicking the do file tab here. And let's go ahead and give our do file an, a title so that way we remember what it's about. I always like a descriptive title to help me when I open up a do file know exactly what's going to happen. So I'm simply going to type in that this file is a demonstration of how to identify tag and drop duplicate observations in a data set. Now if you're working with collaborators on a project or any other partners you can add in a few other things such as a last modified by and a last modified on statement here along with notes just in case you run into any issues. Today we won't be using those but keeping with tradition they are nice programming code and it keeps things clean for us. Let's go ahead and start our do file by typing clear all. This command again will simply clear out all previous information from Stata. In case we've been working in Stata on another project this will allow us to start with a blank slate in Stata without having to open up a new window. For today's example, we will be using a data set from the Research Support Center's website. To access that, we won't actually download the site, but we've made it available using an a internet link within Stata. So we can go ahead and type in use, and then http colon slash slash fhssweb4 dot byu dot edu colon 1019 slash duplicates dot DTA and we can access the data set that way. Let's go ahead and run those two lines of code and make sure that we can get our data set in. As you can see the data set has entered in correctly and we have variables of female, socioeconomic status, reading scores, writing scores, and math scores. Now that our data is in Stata, let's go ahead and visually inspect the data. Instead of using a browse command, we are going to simply use the list command this time so we can view the data in Stata's output window. So we're going to go ahead and type in list. And for, in our case, we don't want to see the entire data set. We just want to see the first 15 observations. So in order to specify that, we'll type in list in 1 through 15 and then a few other specifics that we want to use in our example is we want the observation number to be suppressed we can specify that by this no obs option we also want to compress our file the width of it and also tell Stata that we want a separator at 15 lines this option in our case since we're only viewing the first 15 observations will allow us to see all the first 15 observations without a horizontal line going across our table. So if we run this statement, we can see here in our output window that we have the first 15 observations in our data set, and we can go ahead and check visually for any duplicates. As you can see, the first two observations appear to be different, but are almost identical with the exception of this math score. The next three observations are exactly identical, and we can see some other duplicates as we continue on down. Now, in today's module, we are obviously working with a data set that was created to help us work through identifying duplicates. But in most cases, it will be rare that a visual investigation of the data 
whether through the browse or the list commands, will identify duplicates for us. A better way to investigate for duplicates is by using the duplicates report command, which we're going to start using now. To use that, simply type in duplicates report and run the command. By running, by running the duplicates report command, we receive a table here. On the left, you will see the column labeled copies, right here. This column indicates whether there is a single copy of an observation, by the one, if there are two copies of an observation, two, or if there are three copies of an observation, here with the three. Also, if there are, if there are four or more copies, those will be listed as well. Here, in the case, we have 197 unique observations with zero surplus because there's only one of those observations. We have six observations that have two copies, leaving three surplus. And we also have three observations that have three copies, leaving a surplus of two. So in our case, the duplicates command actually looks for exact copies of an observation independent of whether or not it's a duplicate or a triplicate as we have here. For those of you that may be having trouble understanding this table, simply think of it this way. In the case of our two copies, we have three observations with two copies apiece, making six observations. Now, we don't want to delete all of our observations, so the surplus is simply divided by two, and we have three. In this case here, we have three observations that are, uh, have three copies of each other, meaning that we have a surplus of two if we want to keep the original observation. Now, the duplicates report command can also be used with a variable list. This allows us to relax some of the constraints on the report, given that without verifying or without using a variable list, duplicates report will only report duplicates on all observations in our data set. If we're dealing with a data set of 100 or more variables, this could be a very rare occurrence that we have an exact duplicate of an observation across all variables. Hence, it's often important to look for specific variable lists and see if, if you have any more duplicates than what were reported in your original duplicate report. In our case, we're going to type in duplicates report and look for duplicates on ID, female, and SES. If we run that command, We can see here that our numbers here for a duplicate, for a two copies of a single observation, has increased by one. We now have four surplus instead of three, and we now have eight copies, or eight observations instead of six, meaning that we have exactly one more observation that was duplicated, yet it was only duplicated on the variables ID, female, and SES. Now that we have identified some duplicates in our data set, if we want to look at those duplicates and visually observe what they are, we can do that by using the duplicates list command. To do that, let's simply type in duplicates list, and we're going to indicate to say that we want to use an option, which is the set by, and we're going to separate horizontally by ID. This means that in our table, in our output window, we'll have a horizontal line separating all of our observations by a unique individual ID variable. If we run that, you can see here that all of our duplicates have been printed out and that we do have our horizontal lines separating them, making it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing and also much, much easier to read. And as always, the option is not mandatory to run the command, but in our case, it was something that we like to show to help you understand a little bit more of the features contained within this data. Also, just as with the duplicates report command, we can specify a variable list with the duplicates list. Let's go ahead and do that with using the same list that we used above, ID, female, SES, and go ahead and use our set by ID once more, so that way we can have that nice clear-cut readable table. Here you can see that we have that one extra duplicate observation has been listed in our table, and we can see exactly where it goes. 
Furthermore, now that we've visually inspected our duplicate observations, we can go ahead and make a tag in a new variable for each one of these observations to help us be able to track and identify them in our data set. To do so, we use the duplicates tag command. To execute that command, let's simply type in duplicates tag and let's use the more relaxed version of duplicates specifying ID, female, and SES. Again, by doing so, we are relaxing the constraint that it has to be a duplicate across all variables and simply duplicates across these three. Let's also use the option of gen, and we're going to generate a new variable called dupe ID. This will allow us to generate a dupe ID variable which tags each one of our duplicate observations in our data set. If we run this command, we will see here the command simply runs. We can identify dupe ID here on the right in our variable list. And now, if we want to look at these and visually inspect once more, let's go ahead and use our list command and type in list with the if option. If dupe ID is greater than or equal to 1. And let's also have separation by the ID variable once more. As we run this, we can see here that our table once again is printed out and we have our dupe ID here on the far right indicating exactly how many duplicates there are. In the case of a single extra copy of an observation, you have one duplicate. In a triplicate, you obviously have two duplicates or two surplus and again a single extra copy in these last three. Since we used the list command instead of the duplicates list command, we're able to look at the entire variables for the data set. And here we can see in our first observation that this variable differs, these, uh, these observations differ only on their math score. Now going through this, let's say that we understand that 40 is the correct score for this individual on math, whereas 85 is above the bounds for the possible math scores in this data set. If that's the case, we can go ahead and come over here to our do file and type in replace math equal to 40 if id double equal to 1. Again, the double equal sign means exactly equal to. If we run that command, you can see here that Stata has told us that one real change has been made in Stata. And if we wanted to see that change happen, we could simply rerun our list command here. And you can identify that that 84 has been taken out and replaced by a 40, making these exactly identical observations across all variables. Now that we have identified, listed, and tagged all of our duplicates in our data set, it's time that we can go about dropping them. To do so, there's a very simple command that we can use, which is duplicates drop. Again, just like with duplicates report and duplicates list, you can specify a variable list if you like. In our case, we no longer need to do so because we found that one duplicate which was duplicated across many of the variables except for our math score. We changed that score to the appropriate one and now if we use the duplicates drop, that list will be dropped. You can see here that our six observations have been deleted, leaving us with a data set if we check one more time using the duplicates report with exactly zero duplicates. Our data set now has 200 observations that are exactly unique and we have identified, tagged, and dropped all of our duplicates in our data set. I hope this video has been helpful. Also, if you'd like more instruction on commands in Stata, visit our website at, at fhssrsc.byu.edu. Once on the home page, go ahead and click on our videos tab and you can see a list of our posted videos. This list is small at, at currently but will be growing with time. Thank you once again and I wish you luck on your state adventures.